Hello everybody, this is Matteo Giza from University of Padua. Today we are going to talk about the new version of the Chicago classification of the esophageal motility disorders. The third version of the Chicago classification provides a standardization of the HRM protocol with the aim to optimize the diagnosis of esophageal motor disorders in order to improve our ability to manage these patients. An international working group of 52 experts worked dealing with seven specific aspects of the HRM analysis concerning both the protocol and the different diagnoses, trying to fix problems emerged in last years. A standardized HRM protocol has been proposed. This includes 10 wet swallows in both the supine and the upright position, a multiple rapid swallow and a rapid drink challenge should be included except for cases of clear achalasia after standard 10 swallows. Additional tests as the solid food swallows, pharmacological provocation and postprandial studies should always be considered in specific cases. The dichotomic subdivision into major and minor motor disorders no longer exists. Regarding the diagnosis, achalasian and absent contractility have remained the same. Instead, AGJ atrial obstruction and ineffective esophageal motility have changed. For the diagnosis of distal esophageal spasm and hypercontractile esophagus, further investigation are required. For the diagnosis of AGJ outflow obstruction, symptoms of esophageal dysfunction as dysphagia and non-cardiac chest pain are required, as well as supportive evidence of obstruction at time and barium esophagogram or at flip evaluation. Otherwise, AGJ outflow obstruction should always be considered inconclusive. These further findings are necessary before considering invasive treatments for AGJ outflow obstruction. Frequently, AGJ outflow obstruction does not represent a lower esophageal sphincter dysfunction and an elevated IRP in the supine position can be related to artifacts, hiatal hernia, mechanical obstruction or opioids. The peristaltic pattern associated with the increased IRP should be described. Outflow obstruction with spastic or hypercontractile features has a different and more significant meaning of an AGJ outflow obstruction with ineffective or normal motility. Treatments aimed to disrupt the lower esophageal sphincter are not appropriate in most cases of AGJ outflow obstruction, especially those with ineffective or normal peristalsis and adjunctive tests should be utilized to confirm the diagnosis. Also for the distal esophageal spasm, symptoms are required for a clinically relevant diagnosis. Spastic contraction could be linked to type 3 achalasia spectrum secondary to reflux or opioids. Similarly to AGJ outflow obstruction and distal esophageal spasm, also in hypercontractile esophagus, symptoms like dysphagia and non-cardiac chest pain are required for a clinically relevant diagnosis. Hypercontractile esophagus includes an heterogeneous group of motor abnormalities where jacamer is one of these characterized by repetitive prolonged contractions. Jucamer is usually symptomatic with fairly good response to treatments. However, invasive treatments should be considered with caution. The diagnosis of ineffective esophageal motility becomes more stringent with the third version of the Chicago classification, as more than 70% of ineffective swallows or more than 50% of failed swallows are required. Fragmented swallows are included in ineffective esophageal motility and the diagnosis of fragmented peristalsis no longer exists. This is the scheme of the Chicago classification version 4 with the subclassification in disorders of the AGJ outflow and disorders of the peristalsis. And these are the different diagnoses with the specific metrics required.